Every contender always tries to get better than the season before. Even for championship teams who want any chance of repeating, signing new hungry role players could be key to contending for more titles. Unless you're the 2021 Lakers, reshaping their squad, signing two of the best six men, all leading to a first round exit, simply getting rid of Rajon Rondo and Dwight Howard, big mistakes. Many now wonder, do the Nuggets regret giving up Bruce Brown to Indy for two years 45 mil, being in a essential parts of the 2023 title team, but not to worry, says more minutes to 33-year-old Reggie Jackson, who absolutely destroyed, abused, and annihilated his former team, was traded for Mason Plumlee. How about DeAndre Jordan, more than five years since leaving LAC, absolutely dominated his former team, only the Clippers in 2024 would lose to a two-man duel of Reggie and DJ, making them look like Nash and Amari. A huge reason for early struggles with certain teams, the regrettable decisions, letting their former players walk for absolutely nothing. This past summer, starting with Milwaukee, not resigning Javon Carter, 3 years 20 for the wasteful dysfunctional no hope Bulls, the pesky 6-1 scrappy Bulldog, started 39 of his 81 games for the one seeded Bucks, an 8 point a game score, hitting 32% of his threes, now just wasting away on a franchise that will blow it up any minute now. The mainland Illinois native, a fan favorite, declined his $2.2 million option for good reasons, put pressure on the opposing ball handlers, harassing guys similar to a poor man's Drew Holiday. This season, Milwaukee easily the worst defensive backcourt with 33-year-old Dame Lillard and the atrocious Malik Nodi Beasley, needing every ounce to beat bad teams like the Pistons and Blazers, absolutely no resistance for other guards to get to the rim at ease, having one of the worst defenses. Many now question whether Milwaukee's true title contenders gave up 124 to Miami without Butler and Tyler Hero from first in defensive rating 2019 and 2020 to 21st this season, absolutely inferior outside of paint protectors Giannis and Lopez. Cardo absolutely would be a good fit next to Lillard, a knockdown shooter, certainly miss, having to count on Beasley, who started all 18 games way better offensively than Carter, but absolutely pathetic the other side of the ball. His only highlights or lowlights rather, there's a reason why Darvin Ham put him on the bench last playoffs, tricked badly by Halliburton. Given the toughest guard assignments, the lack of awareness, super concerning. Bucks fans now taking Grayson Allen Steve for granted, seeing Beasley get cooked every night, even if he makes four threes a game. Absolutely not good enough to start between Dame and Chris Middleton. With Jay Crowder out several more weeks, expect Milwaukee to give up 120 plus on the nightly basis. Beasley literally a ghost. Already has a damaged no D reputation. If all the threes breaking, means he's a double negative. How about complaining to the ref mid-game, pointing on the floor while possession in play just to pretend to have a hand up? The fake closeout, that's not the type of starter for any title contender right there. Matt Strews now bowling out for the Cavs, Miami struck out miserably in free agency, allowing their small forward who started all 23 playoff games, career best 14 points, nearly 6 boards, 4 assists, taking over 7.5 trays a game, making nearly 40% from giving his new team extra energy, the monster poster dunks, nobody in their wildest imaginations, thought Strews would be like this. Besides knocking down jumpers, added way more to his game, for many believing he's just a product of Miami's system, putting the ball on the floor, the quick pick and roll dribble handoffs, finding Mobley and Allen, having some Magic Johnson-like passes, a transaction of 4 year 63 seems minor, but could be the difference maker whether Cleveland can make it past the first round. Cavs 7.7 .7 points better per 100 possessions with Struess on the floor, addressed the team's biggest weakness last season with their lack of outside shooting without taking anything away from their strengths. Dylan Brooks of the Houston Rockets, from villain to chillin', the young Rockets having the time of their lives, while the absolute travesty Grizzlies, second to last place in the West, for a second round pick to be a huge part of the Grizz rebuild, be more than capable being a good starter, became the number one scapegoat when Memphis lost to the Lakers, many forgot, team wasn't the same after Steven Adams went down, to add more spiciness to the disrespect, the Grizz relationship with him, Brooks response, like the girlfriend you used to have have, you don't know how good she is until she's gone. Memphis no longer has swagger. The Rockets have all the swag and identity building up from label not NBA quality. Had all the media members losing their minds. 
Much improved game, taking less shots, still shooting above 40 from 3, brushed up his bad habits, plays his heart out every night, views every possession like it's game 7, having one of the biggest redemption seasons, 4 years 86, so much for all the China comments, for the media having the audacity, posting the Grizz won't bring him back under any circumstances, seems like some were truly out to get him, now Marcus Martin fed up cursing some type of way, the Rockets all of a sudden, the team put on the map faster than most anticipated. Eric Gordon, now filling in for the banged up Bradley Beal, the Clippers could have used him. Playing around 30 minutes a night, the soon to be 35 year old still got plenty of game, 15 points on average, 40 from 3, one of the perfect role players needed, saved the Clips some luxury tax money, but nothing luxurious about the Clippers associated with winning these days. Gordon was supposed to be a son a decade ago, but New Orleans matched the offer sheet, super key for the team's title hopes. No stranger to playing starting minutes, Clippers literally got rid of Luke Kennard and John Wall for Gordon's brief services, a player who would have fit in nicely for Harden. Now the Clippers have their own problems, e.g. right high, getting open looks from Durant and Booker all night long. Lonnie Walker the 4th of the Brooklyn Nets, the soon to be 25 year old, always had the talents to score, a career best 15 points average, draining 42 of his first 91 trades, one of the 6 men front runners on a team not expected to do much, a huge luxury for a 2 million dollar minimum, while other draft mates received multi year deals like Michael Porter Jr and even the abysmal Landry Shamit. His skills misunderstood from Darvin Ham, benching him second half the season due to Austin Reeves emergence. Single handedly won the Lakers game 4 worst Golden State, now showcasing his touch around the rim. Had he been getting DMPs for the Lakers another year, could have been out the league. But getting a fresh start on a team that needs him, looking like the steal of the offseason, especially if Brooklyn makes the playoffs a dark horse candidate to help the team win a play in elimination game. Dennis Schroeder of the Toronto Raptors, nothing but positive energy, the now 30 year old excelling as Fred Van Vliet's replacement might not be the scorer, but gets everyone involved, great at exploiting mismatches, a near 17.7 assist guy, getting paid just one third of what Van Vliet makes a year, good intangibles, annoying to play against, helps Scotty Barnes gets more touches, a key part to the Lakers second half turnaround last season, actually started with him on the defensive end, January 20th, huge steal and game winning layup on Memphis, the turning point of the season, the defense and playmaking gave Vincent supposed to take over, but the knee injury taking longer than expected, shooter excellent chemistry with Ann Davis, one of the few reasons for AD's offensive struggles, not having another facilitator to get him the ball, while D'Lo and Reeves not pass first guys, the leadership, defensive intensity, and clutch play all missing. So far, Lakers haven't found that energy role guy yet, a key reason for LA's game 1 road win on Golden State. Confidence picking up from FIBA play for champion Germany. The Lakers signed Vincent six days before Schroeder took his talents to Canada. Derek Jones Jr. of the Dallas Mavericks, 26 years old, looked like his NBA days might be over, but looking like he'll reach the beginning stages of his prime, still holding on to career best over 8.5 points. From sign August 18th, all 29 teams ignored his athleticism to being the starting small forward, changing the Mavs' identity on both ends, much improved on the outside shot, over 38%. Dallas will continue winning most games. If Jones' production remains steady, already on his 5th different teams in 8 seasons, being the primary wing defender, hitting threes, adding transition buckets, something the Mavs lacked last season, a worthy mention of most improved player, do it all type energy guy, doesn't need the ball in his hands, utilizing his athleticism properly, having the luxury to play a wall of the league's best passers in Luka, even if there's nice he- Jones Jr. gets cold, the competitiveness on the other side of the ball, already a plus going forward. The Bulls on the other hand, don't know how to use any of their role players correctly. Many Bulls fans didn't understand why he didn't get any runs last season. Half the players from that 2022 Chicago roster will be gone a year from now, everybody will get a fresh start. Dante DiVincenzo of the New York Knicks. A glute guy last season with Golden State, started 36 of 72 games, played well in Andrew Wiggins' absence, averaged 9.4 points, 4.5 rebounds, dubs absolutely missing his energy and young legs, a do-it-all hustle guy, shoots the 3 at nearly 40% last season, Golden State would have won a couple more games if Dante was still there due to the heavy luxury tax, 
DiVincenzo smartly declined his $4.7 million option to get four years 50 mil. A proven winning player was actually a solid starter for the 2021 Bucks team before an ankle injury made him fall out the rotation. Not great at one particular area, but effective in several facets of the game. Can make sneaky cuts for easy layups, dish to open teammates, a high IQ understanding the game. All credit to the great Jay Wright having all the Villanova guys excel in the league. Pretty much most of them in New York. Has no ego, doesn't care if he comes off the bench. Golden State simply can't replace him. First, it was Gary Payton the second, earning big money after helping the Dubs win a title. Same with Otto Porter. Now finessing the hell out of the Raptors, Dante doing his part with the Knicks. Next, the answer is definitely Dario Saric, setting himself up for a big payday post Steve Kerr era. Just like how DiVincenzo shot the lights out, winning his second national title with Villanova could be the X factor that changes the momentum of a playoff series. Which one of these teams will have the biggest regret letting an important key player walk for absolutely nothing? Your thoughts on the comments below, and I'll see you next time.